Okay. Hey, what's up? Let's make a uh, video um, to correct a lot of mistakes. And this isn't about anybody in particular. It's really not. So I don't want anybody to think that. It is about actually setting the record straight on a lot of stuff. And the reason that there needs to be another video on this is because really the top five photography YouTube channels um, have a lot of really hardcore misinformation. I mean, it's kind of half right, but it's really ultimately wrong. When it comes to a full frame versus crop sensor uh, cameras, I've owned tons of both. And, uh, you know, I've got two D810s. They're both 36 megapixel sensors. And uh, full frame D750s, uh, which is uh, really a revamped D610 sensor. They didn't actually revamp the sensor, but they added and changed the 80 converters. And I've got, you know, four Fujis, those are DX crop sensors, and the camera that I recommended to countless thousands of people, the Nikon D7100, and, you know, everybody has been just happier than a pig and poo with that camera, except for one person that got a bum camera, but that's no impugnment on the camera. Um, but it is the case that, really, the top five photography channels, if you type in, you know, DX versus FX on the Internet, and, or you do it on YouTube, um, you'll come up with these videos, and they're really, you know, heinously misinformed, and I think it's really, it's not, you know, malicious, so you can't say, well, you know, this person is, a, you know, a stinker because they're giving out wrong information, it's just that they're misinformed, and everybody makes mistakes, and that's perfectly fine, um, there's a person from Down Under, Down Under that uh, made a vi video, something like, is bigger, better when it comes to FX or DX, and there are a lot of sort of videos and articles about that, and I'm going to correct some errors, and this is nothing personal, and uh, I'd like you to learn something, because this will be helpful. Because a lot of people, you know, that have a DX sensor, they have a bloodlust, or they get uh, brainwashed by photography magazine garbage that, uh, you know, they need to have a full-frame sensor camera, you know. Uh, Fuji is selling the, 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 the dog piss out of DX crop sensor cameras, and so is... Uh, so is Nikon. Um, so is Sony, for that matter, really. Um, let's really let's set some things straight and let's establish some hardcore facts and things that are irrefutable and undeniable. Is bigger better when it comes to sensors? Well, the answer to that is mostly no, but sometimes yes. That means actually DX crop sensors have, especially in the past few years, many more advantages by a little bit than full-frame sensors. The uh, dynamic range of full-frame sensors is undeniable, uh, as well as is the high ISO performance. But that has been cut a lot. It's actually been cut by about 70% in the past few years due to SNR firmware, because noise actually has frequencies. And uh, this in SNR firmware eliminates that. So let's actually address some points in uh, this one video that are erroneous, okay? It uh, is stated by uh, 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 said person that I do not think anybody can argue that a bigger sensor isn't better. Well, that's just flat out wrong. It's, it's, this is why, by the way, I ask everybody, you know, well, what sort of camera should I have? I don't say, well, you know, bigger is better, therefore you should have a full frame sensor camera. No, I have to ask them what it is that they shoot, and because that's important. You know, you're shooting low light, wildlife, bird photography. You know, if you're able to nail down specifics of what someone's going to primarily be shooting, or they could just be a general shooter. So this is wrong. And I can eagerly, uh, easily argue, same that uh, this person is incorrect. And he's not the only one. There are many, many people out there. And this isn't about calling anybody out, either. This is about establishing facts and correcting untruths. Or, they're not lies, they're just, it's just misinformation. It's not like someone is maliciously trying to lie to you. It's just... You know, there's nothing else other than to call it other than agnosis. It, it's ignorance. But it's not willful ignorance to deceive, but it's just ignorance. And uh, that's fine. And uh, it is the case that given ample light, there's more informational data per square millimeter on a smaller pixel pitch sensor uh, than there is on a full frame. So I'll get into that in a second and when that's important when it's not. At 7 minutes and 14 seconds, and uh, he states that... Uh, a bigger pixel size or photo site on your sensor is better, but that's absolutely not true at all. It depends. What are you? Are you a bird shooter? Are you shooting clubs and raves and whatnot? 
what is important to you. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, at 7 minutes and 32 seconds into the video, the person states, a boulder captures more light out in the sun than does a little pebble. So he's actually comparing photo sites to like boulders on a full frame sensors to like little pebbles on a DX sensor. Well, that is a really, really interesting analogy, and I'm going to run with that. If your picture is comprised, i.e. the sensor and the data that's captured, all things being equal, I'm not talking at this second about low light or dynamic range, got decent exposure, which is what basically everybody's got 95% of the time, unless you're like a low light shooter, you know, uh, unless uh, you got high ISO shooter, but that really doesn't, ex you know, define 95% of general shooters. If you need that ultra high ISO or that uh, dynamic range, then that's a matter for another discussion. But uh, let's run with his analogy about boulders versus pebbles. If your picture is comprised of 100 different points of light, or boulders versus like 10,000 pebble points of light, See, this is all sensors are about. They're not about size. It's not a bucket of water. It's like, well, a bigger picture window, you know, is letting more light in. It's not about that. It's about translational data, okay? Translational data. But what's important if you need high SO or a great dynamic range, then it's not about absolute translational data, which is a lot more on a DX sensor than it is on a full frame sensor. So you have to ask, and I ask you people when you ask, what's the best camera? It's like, well, I can't answer that because I don't know what you're going to be doing and what you're going to be shooting. I need to have detailed specific information to give you a detailed specific answer. So let's run with this boulder versus pebble analogy. Which has more information per square millimeter when cropped? A gigantic a uh, bunch of boulders or a bunch of little pebbles. Okay, you got a sensor with a hundred boulders on it. Let's just run with that analogy. How much data points of light are on a sensor if it had like a hundred boulders on it? Okay, hundred points of light, right? How much data would be on a DX sensor if it had like a thousand or ten thousand little pebbles on it? Ten thousand points of light. Okay, so is there more information per square millimeter on the sensor with the little pebbles all over it? Or more information per square millimeter on the sensor that has the, uh, the boulders on it? I'm using his analogy, by the way. You know, I'm defeating, I'm defeating his own premise with his own analogy. I'm using his analogy to prove that he's wrong. He is right if it is the case that you're a low light or high SO shooter. In which case, you want that better dynamic range and that better high ISO performance. If, however, okay, you are a bird, nature, wildlife shooter, and all these people crop the piss out of their shots. They crop the piss. They're shooting a little speckled woodpecker 10,000 yards away with a $20,000 lens. Okay? You're going to crop the hell out of your shot. Do you want the sensor that has 100 boulders on it or the sensor that has 10,000 pebbles on it? This is talking about given enough exposure, where is the more information present? Here or here? That's right. I am correct. This is irrefutable. It is undeniable. Pixel pitch. Pixel pitch is a lot smaller. Unlike the, D the D7100, if it were scaled up to a full-frame sensor, would be a 54-megapixel sensor. If it were scaled up with the same pixel pitch. Take uh, 24 times 1.5. It's 1.5 something, actually. So, it's not about a big versus small sensor. Rather, information per millimeter. Gain and dynamic range. And this is why I say, I can't tell you what's the best camera. Why can't you? Because I don't know what you're going to be shooting. And you could be shooting, uh, you know, birds and wildlife. And you could be shooting club scenes where high ISO performance is absolute king. And, that, you know, you're not going to be shooting birds. You're going to be shooting, you know, uh, some chicken spandex up on the, the stripper pole or something, ultra low light or, you know, what, whatever it is you're going to be shooting. <laughs> um, so this is why I ask people what they're going to shoot. In low light, an FX sensor is better. Likewise, so also is the case in higher ISO. But much of this has been nulled by SNR firmware. Because noise has a frequency. This is the reason, folks, and if you don't believe this is a hardcore fact, this is the reason radio astronomy stopped using gigantic bastard dishes that were just huge, like the Arecibo dish, which I think is in Puerto Rico, or is it the Dominican Republic? They stopped using those. They started uh, employing SNR firmware instead of using gigantic, huge uh, 
dishes because uh, electromagnetic radiation is electromagnetic radiation. It doesn't matter if it's radio astronomy or digital sensors that are capturing visible light. Uh, they started using lots of little arrays of dishes that acted like a gigantic dish. This is why, you know, the smaller uh, pixel pitch and photo sites is the future. I mean, that's the way everything is going. It's undeniable the new Canon 5D is actually splitting the difference between the two. Now that the only thing is limiting it is the buffer rate at which all that massive amount of 54 megapixels of data can be buffered and, uh, and converted and, you know, dumped onto under the card. So that's the, that's the issue now. There's plenty of information. It is about transporting. It's about the transport mechanism. Um, in low light, yeah, okay. A DX crops uh, sensor crops the best part of any full frame lens. The absolute best part. Now this is an undeniable hardcore fact. It doesn't matter if it's an expensive Zeiss lens or if it's a, uh, you know, a cheap Walmart lens. Every lens is exactly like this. It's got a bright spot in the center and everything falls up. Vignetting, right. Every damn lens, full frame DX, doesn't matter. They're all like this. All of them. So when you're using a DX crop sensor, it's cropping the best part of any full frame lens. A DX also uses the brightest part of any full frame lens and crops out the vignetting, kind of like someone making a sandwich and peeling off the bread crust, right? More magnification is obviously required for a DX file than for an FX. You're blowing up, you know, you're blowing up this versus this. Which needs more magnification for an 8x10 print? That's obvious. Is that really an issue? <coughs> no, it isn't. Is it for some people, like landscape shooters and portrait photographers? Yeah, it is. That's why I always ask someone what they're going to be shooting. Because the say that a bigger sensor is better is BS. It's a hardcore, undeniable, logical, irreducible, irrefutable fact. Is it better? Yes and no. DX has a lot of advantages that full frame don't have. Full frame uh, sensors have some advantages that DX sensors don't have. Um, it's also a misnomer, and you can go on uh, uh, Crop versus Crap is the name of the article by uh, Zach Arias. He's a funny dude. He can't stand all these people that are uh, whipping out, uh, you know, measuring sticks. And he has a really neat article called Crop versus Crap, and he actually shows you. I hear a lot of people talk about Boko. Well, you get better Boko. You got a full frame, uh, you know, that's not true. He actually shows you the examples. Why should I recreate it when you go to his article? And you can see that he uses an 85 millimeter on a, on a, a DX crop sensor Fuji and the same exact lens on uh, a Nikon D3. They both got the exact same bokeh. They're both using the same lens. So this bokeh, bokeh theory is absolute BS. Um, more magnification is required for a DX file than an FX. Okay, so that's one FX advantage. Lens magnification on a full frame capture. Given good light, there's more information on a DX sensor than a full frame sensor, even with less dynamic range and less gain, since that's in our firmware has nearly eliminated out this issue. Full frame uh, advantages obviously exist in dynamic range and gains. DX advantage advantages exist in more translational information per square millimeter of sensor and use of the best part of any FX lens sweet spot. Irreducible, undeniable, and irrefutable. Nobody can call my bluff on this. You can't deny it. It's a fact. You know, saying someone is ignorant doesn't mean that they're an idiot. It's just that they don't know. And, uh, you know, I'm ignorant on how to fix cars. I'm ignorant on a thousand things. Nobody knows everything, and nobody claims to know everything, uh, at least of all me. Um, but this is a fact, and it's irrefutable, and it's undeniable. And the information that's out there on full frame versus DX, well, the answer is yes and no. But the notion that I don't think anybody can argue that bigger isn't better, well, I can argue it, and I just proved it. Um, saying that a bigger pixel size on your sensor is better, wrong! Flat out wrong. I just proved it. It's not the case. You want to make a boulder versus pebble analogy? Well, here's the boulders on a full frame sensor, larger photo sites, and here's the pebbles on a DX sensor. If you're a bird shooter, nature shooter, and you're cropping the piss out of your shot, where is there more information? Would you rather crop out something that's got 100 boulders on it or 10,000 pebbles? It's not about size. This is not buckets of water and window frames. Well, you know, this bigger, bigger window lets in more lights. So that means it's better. Bigger is better. 
No, this is about pictures. We're not talking about one gigantic hunk of light coming in warming your face. We're talking about millions and millions of little points of light that make up the composition of the shot. In which case, if you're a nature shooter, if you're going to crop the hell out of your shot, then the 10,000 pebbles blows the piss and the balls right off the sensor that's got 100 uh, boulders on it, doesn't it now? Irreducible, hardcore fact. Whew. Technically smaller sensors record and capture more light information per square millimeter of sensor due to having smaller photo sites. Irreducible, irrefutable. This is why I ask, someone says, what's the best camera? Well, what are you shooting? I don't know, I don't know, what's the best camera? You know, I got $600 to spend. Can't help you, I need more information. If you want me to just, you know, blow stuff out of my butt, you know, just say, hey, buy this, you know. That doesn't help anybody. For me to be helpful, I need information. And uh, when you know this stuff, then you can make a wise, informed, logical choice. So this is about full-frame sensors versus DX sensors. Everything I stated here is irrefutable, irreducible, hardcore fact. Go tell it to anybody and say, you know, disprove this fat, tattooed idiot. You tell me where he's wrong. They won't be able to do it. They can't. It is irrefutable. 100%. So... Um, I may be fat, bald, and ugly, but I've just created the most accurate video on full frame versus DX crop sensor as far as which is better and the whole notion that bigger is better when it comes to sensors anyway. <laughs> you see, that, see what I'm getting at here? I love the fact that he brought up the boulder versus pebble analogy. He used that to support his position that bigger is better. And I use the exact same thing, of course he gave no facts for that, I use the exact same analogy to prove to you that I am correct. Depending. If you're a low light shooter and you're a high ISO shooter, the case is, however, that 95% of the shooters out there that are actually exposing with enough ambient light or flashlight, you know, flash illumination, then the high ISO is not an issue then the greater dynamic range is not an issue. That really defines 90, 95% all the shooters out there. It's like, well, you know, I shoot in dark club scenes and I, uh, I'm gonna shoot wedding photography and I can't use flash illumination in uh, the chapel. Full frame sensor for you, baby. You need it. That is the best answer for you. But to say that bigger is better is a flat out agnosis. See, when you say ignorant, it sounds like you're calling someone dumb or stupid. It just means ignorance. I, as a Greek Platonist and a translator of ancient Greek, I stick to the Greek term agnosis. It means you just don't know. You're stating untruths. You're stating things that are ignorant. It doesn't mean you're hurting or defaming anybody, okay? It just means that the information is inaccurate or skewed. Skewed from knowing the whole totality of the facts. So, thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something from this because wisdom is always better than agnosis. Loxi veritas.